Uh, next, I'd like to uh, demonstrate the object image relationships for the uh, concave mirror. Here I have a concave mirror. This shows light rays coming in parallel to the axis, crossing the axis, and converging to the focal point, and then diverging out from the focal point off uh, away from the mirror. This shows that same mirror with a focal point identified here with an object, a disposition. It's about uh, three focal distances out from the mirror. Uh, this shows the light rays from the top of the object going up to the mirror, one going this way and one coming down this way, and those two light rays then converging to this point out here. This identifies the image point. Notice that the image, in this case, is smaller than the object. It's inverted. It's real. And uh, it's also closer to the mirror than is the object. If we move the object up closer to the mirror, notice then the image moves further away. In this case, the image is larger than the object, still inverted, still real. And now it's further away and it's larger than the object. Then when we take the object and move it inside the focal distance, closer to the mirror than the focal length, then light from the top of the object goes out parallel, goes through the focal point. A ray of light going as if coming from the focal point comes up here, goes out parallel. These two rays of light that start at the top of the object then appear to diverge from this point back here that identifies the virtual image. We notice when the object is Closer to the mirror than the focal length, the image is larger than the object, so we have magnification. The image is erect, it's virtual, and it's also further from the mirror than is the object. I'd like to demonstrate all three of these situations here now with the concave mirror. To do that, I'm going to use this as an object this light globe, and we're going to use this uh, arrow here as our uh, object, and I'll face that toward the mirror. Here's the concave mirror that we're going to use, and I'm going to form that image on a screen here. If I put the screen between the object and the mirror, of course, it cuts out light from the object coming up to the mirror, so I have to have the screen off to the side here just a little bit. So the path of light will be light from the object will come up to the mirror and reflect from the mirror onto the screen and form an image on the screen. And now we'll demonstrate that by having the camera look uh, toward the screen and uh, see if we can pick up that image on the screen as I change the relative distance between the object and the mirror. Uh, now we have the uh, light intensity adjusted and uh, we're going to uh, have the object be just uh, two or three feet away from the mirror and we're going to try to form an image at about this distance. We're going to look at that from this direction with this camera over here looking toward the screen and see if we can form an image from this object reflecting from the mirror, forming a real image on the screen. Here we have the screen. And uh, I'm going to have to turn the intensity up just a little bit in order for that image to show up on the screen. And now the image is on the screen at about that position. And then I'm going to pull the screen slightly in front of the object to block the light from the object going into the camera, but still allow the light from the object to strike the mirror and then reflect onto the screen. And then if I turn the intensity up just a little bit, we'll see that image on the screen a little more distinctly. And now we can see that indeed we have an inverted image on the screen, smaller in size than the uh, object, and it's a real image, and it's uh, inverted. So now I'm going to move the object distance back a little bit, and let's see what happens to the image. The image is going to move closer to the mirror. And in fact, if I move the object all the way back to infinity, the image would come right to the focal point, and the object would be an infinite distance away, 
and the image would be infinitesimally small located, located at the focal point. However, if you could see it, it would still be inverted and real. Okay, now I'm going to move the object uh, back up about to where it was before. And uh, let's locate the image at about uh, this position here. And now I'd like to do something uh, that uh, is very interesting. And it is, that is to have the camera look at the light coming up, reflecting from the mirror off. And I'll move the screen away and we'll have the camera look right into the mirror and see that image hanging right out there in space. So now we have the same setup with the object here, the mirror here, but rather than having a screen here, I now have a socket, an empty socket that's inverted, and we're going to form that image, a real image, and it's going to look like it's hanging from the bottom of the socket. It's going to look like the light globe is, is in this socket, turned upside down, but in this position. To see that, we need to take a look at it from this other camera over here, where the camera looks straight toward the mirror and gathers the light coming from that image. So now we have the image as if it were hanging from an inverted socket here. And when I take that socket out of the way, we'll see that that image remains. Notice it's an inverted image as if it were hanging from that position right there. It's real, reduced in size, and inverted.